Okay, now those are all done. We've got something kind of looking like this. The idea is these will be the legs. I'm gonna cut these and they're gonna sit on the outside here and here. Then we'll have the other two pieces that go there and there. It's obviously gonna be bigger. So what I'm gonna do now is go and cut all these to the final dimension that I want with 45 degree miters um, on all the pieces. And then we can build that, set it in place, and then fasten it all together with glue and some, I use some screws, like I pre-drill and use screws on the inside. And then it comes and grabs onto those and sucks everything together. Okay, just quick to show you here. So no nails, no screws, no biscuits, no nothing. Just a nice tight, tight joint. And then this strap just holds everything together nice and easy. If I wipe the glue away, you can see we've just got a really nice tight joint. Since we've got um, our, our miter is all set right, like it can't help but pull everything together um, into the 45s and, and make us a 90 degree angle. If we grab this square here and set it on. We'll see that we've got perfectly 90. Like there's not even, if your angles are right and your boards are square, then you can't help but get things all 90 degrees. Okay, it's tomorrow. I got the same hat, but a different shirt on today. This has set up uh, nice, the glue is all dry, so I'm gonna unclamp it. We'll clean up all the glue. We'll give it a nice sand over the entire thing. And then I'm going to put some uh, black walnut um, stain on it and give it some give it some color hey before I stain here real quick let's just review or critique what I've got going on here um, as with all the videos you've seen like I'm looking for nice tight joints I'm looking for nice tight miters I'm looking for good uh, glue ups you know like I want nice straight lines and mission accomplished here. Okay, time for some stain. I'm gonna use Watco Danish oil. This is the black walnut, it's the dark stuff. Um, this Watco oil, this Danish oil, is basically a mix between an oil and a polyurethane. It's trying to be a hybrid and kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, so it, it, it is a sealant, it, it does soak into the wood and um, it's, it's good, I like it. In this case, I'm really only using it to uh, make this dark so then I can put white paint on top of it and then sand it and reveal some of the dark underneath. So the criteria I'm looking for is something dark, something kind of easy to apply. And because it has that mix of the polyurethane with it, um, I find that when I use this stuff as opposed to a stain, when I go put the white paint on top, if this stuff is dry, it doesn't seep through, right? Like it doesn't leak and, and cause problems. In, in that case, you usually would put on a stain and then you put a polyurethane on top and then you put the white paint on top of the polyurethane to stop the oil from leaking through into your paint. And um, I've had good luck with this stuff. So I'm gonna brush this on. Okay, the glue is all set up on this bench top. We're gonna unclamp it and we're gonna sand it all down with an 80 with my trusty BO 6050J Makita sander. Okay, so I've unclamped everything. It's all looking really good. That's the top side. This is off at the bottom side. I do want to have a nice flat bottom. It's really close right now. I am going to square up this bottom kind of quick. So there's a number of ways of doing this. Well, really two uh, that, that you might have. One is going to be one of, one of your hand planes and you're going to plane across the entire thing or basically use the electric version. You've got a, you know, a bigger, they're, they're both flat blades. Um, depending on the size of your hand plane, it may or may not be that size. This one's got two of them on the inside, and basically you're just using battery power to spin that blade as opposed to pushing a flat blade across. Um, some will contend that this will give you a better finish, and I won't argue with that, but this is the bottom of the board, and really all we're trying to do is take off enough material that everything's nice and flat. So there's just a tiny bit of difference in some of these joints right now in cleaning up the glue. So I'm gonna set this on the second setting and just kind of work my way across the entire board from front to back, and that's gonna give me the, the flat enough surface that I need to either put it through the planer or just flip it over and it's the underside anyways. I could sand it after that. You can use this, uh, it takes a little bit more time. Some people that are purists prefer it, they think that it's better, you're gonna get a workout, which is always good, you can lose some calories, um, but I'm gonna use this, this Makita unit right here. I'll have a description below if you wanna check this one out. I use it quite often. <laughs> So I 
I'll do a first pass like that. It kind of gives me a reference point, and I'll just go right beside and just keep following my way across. So yeah, now I'm going to sand both sides of this. I'll flip it over, sand the back side of it uh, to get it flat, and then I'm going to go through and do kind of what I explained before and, and sand this top down. All right, so on this bench top, we've got these uh, two boards in the middle that are actually joined and they're glued and they're solid and they're good. I'm not that worried about them, but um, I am gonna put a type of, a type of um, bow tie in there. So there's a uh, slab stitcher. They make this pretty cool product where you can, you can have bow ties or X's or they've got a bunch of different shapes now. Basically, it's just a little jig and a brass bushing type deal in their router bit and you can router out their CNC cut bow ties. Um, they, they work awesome. If you set it up right, they, they go in, there's a huge, they're a huge time savings device and uh, they look really good. So the two reasons to put bow ties in, one is to strengthen a joint or to strengthen a crack or to prevent something from cracking any further to stabilize wood. And second is just to, to look good. It's just aesthetics. And in this case, it's kind of playing both functions. So really it's pretty simple. Um, you've got to put this bushing in cause this is what kind of holds the, the router bit nice and steady. All right. So that goes in there, and I'm going to swap out my router bit. That fits back over top, and we're going to want to set the depth. So if you, if you look here, the, the depth of the bushing right now is just under the depth of this little plexiglass deal. So we want to set the depth of the router bit to be just this, like exactly the same size or the same depth as the cutout, or maybe just a little bit less. And that way this will sit up kind of proud and you can sand it off flat afterwards. So what we're gonna do is we wanna set this piece, cause that's what it's gonna be sitting on, on top of whatever you're cutting through. And you're gonna set the depth so that router bit just touches the top of the, the wood. And like I say, maybe just a little bit less so you give yourself a little bit of room to sand that off afterwards. And now, when that's sitting down flat, then we've got the depth of that accounted for. So I'm just gonna place this on here, kind of how I want it. I'm gonna clamp it down. We're gonna router this baby out. And then we'll clean up the edges with a chisel and we can set that X in place. Like I said, they do have bow ties and they're cool too. I just haven't done an X yet. I ordered them a while ago, so I want to do an X. Okay, so now we're going to move on and put a filler across this entire deal. The reason I put the filler on is because it uniformly fills. So let me step back really quickly. At this point, you can come and just sort of spot fill all the holes, um, spot fill some of the cracks. But when you, when you do that, you kind of end up with sort of a splotchy looking, looking deal. So I, I get um, wood filler. Um, that's usually for floors, for filling floors, and I trowel and flood coat the entire thing and push it down into every one of the cracks and every one of the holes because it's barn wood, it's got a lot of those, saw marks and, and everything. That's, there's two reasons for doing that. One, it helps to level everything out, and two, where all the character marks are, that ends up being a uniform color and looks kind of cool afterwards. So normally I use this Woodwise patch filler. It's great, I love it, there's no, there's no reason that I don't, but I was on Amazon the other day and it, it, when I was, I was ordering some more of it, and this came up as another recommended product, and it said Good Fella. And I thought, that's a cool name. So I wanted to try it out. So I ordered some, and I got it in today. And so I have opened it up, and it's, it says Trowel Ready. And it looks Trowel Ready. And so normally, it would be wise to kind of do a test piece. But I'm going to just do what Shania Twain says and bet on love and let it ride. We're going to put this all over it and see what happens. It looks black. It looks good. It looks very similar, maybe a bit darker. Um, so I'm going to slop some on there. You're going to see me trowel it off uh, and spread it out super, super thin in the areas where there's thicker, um, or not thicker, but deeper grooves. I, with this stuff, I typically have to come back and refill it. I imagine it'll be the same with this. This is a water base, it says. It's also, you can stain it, you can paint it, you can sand it. It's got a lot of the same characteristics and I'm gonna give it a try. For those of you that wanna know, this is kind of what it ends up looking like. You might think that you destroyed your whole tabletop or bench top, 
but wait till the next step. All right, I went and had some lunch and this uh, black stuff is all dried up now. Before I put this stuff on, I did actually go and trim it. I didn't tell you guys that, nor I didn't film it, but remember how I left it long? Before I put this stuff on, I cut it down to 70, was where I, which was where I wanted it, just on the chop saw and then I sanded the sides. So I've got a 150 on here now. Um, I'm gonna sand the whole thing down, leaving it as flat, uh, you know, relatively flat so that it basically creates a nice flat surface. Another reason why I like this is a six inch instead of a five inch, so you got kind of a bit more of a footprint. Um, we're gonna sand it all down and kind of see if any of these deeper crevices and cracks need um, some, some more. And if not, then I'll probably go to 220 and then 320 and then we can put our, our finish on. Sanding, now we're left with um, a really nice smooth surface. You know, like one of the major things is we wanna cover up and plug all these cracks and holes. This is gonna be a bench at a, at a kitchen table and people might wipe their, kids might wipe their spaghetti hands or something down there. So I don't want anything down in the cracks. I want a nice smooth surface. I don't want slivers in anybody's butt. Um, and everywhere where the black stayed in these saw marks and cracks and everything, it's all a uniform color now. It is gonna get, there's our nice X, there's that big long crack. Um, it is gonna get some, some color now, but uh, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, there was a crack here in the end that was kind of going all the way through on, on just the end of it. So I put in one more bow tie. Um, in this case, like it does look cool and everything, but it really was to help that crack not want to do a whole lot more than it had already done. Even though this is dry wood, um, that's a real practical use for, for one of those bow ties. So this one has one of those bow ties and that X in the middle that, that uh, helps those two boards stay together. Okay, so I'm really happy with where this one is at. I went up to 220. That was about enough. I didn't feel like I needed to go any more than that. Um, I'm going to use Osmo on this one, this Osmo wax um, or hard oil wax, I guess it is. And pretty easy, crack it open, um, you mix it up, and then I'll rub it in. It penetrates down into the, into the wood. It really brings out a lot of the, the character of it. It is, a, it is a color. It's a little bit uh, lighter than the last one that I did in the last video. And we rub it on, and then we'll come back afterwards and take off all the excess and kind of just buff it a little bit. And that's it, then we let it set up overnight. Okay, so apparently the video of me painting this didn't really work. Uh, it wasn't that complex. I basically used white paint. I brushed it all on. I did two coats. I actually wanted this one to be quite um, a little bit thicker, like I wanted the paint to be white. And, or it's the paint to be white. The paint to be thick. And now I'm going to go with my sander. Uh, you can do it by hand. You can do it with an orbital sander. I'm going to do it with mine. Uh, I've got 150 grit on here. And just lightly, I'm going to start passing over it and paying attention to wherever the corners and the edges are and sometimes in the middle and just get some of that brown to sort of show through um, so it looks like it's kind of, you know, rustic. And so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Just starting to make the brown from the stained wood kind of show through in, in some areas. I don't want it to be super regular, like it might look like, you know, more people walked and brushed against it on this side than that side. Um, if you do it all entirely uniform, then it kind of looks manufactured. So you're, you're just kind of doing it a little bit randomly, but obviously paying attention to the parts where normal uh, rub and wear would have, would have happened. Okay, so this is our top. I've got it flipped over. Um, I didn't video it, but I did put polyurethane on the bottom of this just to, just to seal it. It doesn't have any color on it, but it's the bottom. So people can't see it. Now we're going to put our base on it. We'll center it. And I'm going to use these L brackets, angle brackets. We're going to, I'm going to put them into the base first and I'm going to leave them just above the bottom of this top. So then when I, when I go to screw it down, it actually really sucks it into it. Not, you don't want to do a whole bunch or you twist the whole thing up, but I leave it up just a hair. And then when I go and screw down into the top, like I say, it just, it just sandwiches everything down really nice. I will pre-drill before and then I'll sink the, the screws in. Pretty simple deal. And I'm gonna put one more uh, finish coat on top of here. I did the stain, as you saw. I actually did put a top coat on. So with this Osmo, you do your stain and then you do a top coat. And I'll do two top coats on this. Um, so we'll roll it on. And then I just like to kind of buff it out with a rag. Okay, so what I've got here is the Osmo Poly X. Um, I put it in this tray with a foam roller and I've just rolled it and rolled it and rolled it until it's uniform across the entire deal. There's not a whole lot 
that you have to put on. And then I'll just, I'll, I actually, uh, I guess I'll start on the side here. And I'm just gonna go back and forth over this whole deal, spread it out. Thin is good, there's gonna be more than enough on this roller. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back, oh, what do we got there? I'm gonna go back and forth this way. Like that, and then I'm gonna back roll lightly the entire thing. Just overlapping a little bit. That'll give me a nice, even coat. I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back with a, a clean rag, and then just wipe with the grain, and level it all out. Okay, now I'm gonna take a clean rag, and I'm, this is, I'm just basically wiping off the excess. I'm just gonna go along with the grain all the way down. Nice and even, and we're just kind of smoothing it out and taking off the excess, just like that. And now we will let that stuff do its job and set up, and this bench is done.